Hey, if we haven't met, I'm Leah and I have a handmade clothing business called Charlie Darwin Textiles. And uh, I make linen clothing that's all plant dyed and made to custom measurements. And today I'm super excited to bring you a video about how I use the selvage edge of fabric in the actual clothing design. I incorporate it into seams, into ruffles, into neckline, collar, uh, collar stance. And when it's a frayed selvage edge like this, it adds a little bit extra texture that I love and helps my clothing look that much more earthy uh, and soft and worn in just the way I like it. So let's get into it. This week, we're getting a little bit edgy. We're just gonna do selvage edge today, everyone. We are talking selvage edge. So the selvage edge is a really cool part of the fabric that a lot of us aren't using. This is the edge of the fabric that's been pre-bound by the manufacturer. And they do this, of course, to keep the fabric from unraveling or fraying before it's sewn up into whatever it's going to be. The selvage edge is very often a little bit thicker or tighter woven than the rest of the fabric. It's usually just discarded when you're doing different sewing projects, but I actually love to incorporate it into my designs as a special element that adds texture or dimension to the clothing. I personally love adding it as a design element because it helps me reduce any fabric waste. I can actually cut edge to edge, use more of my fabric that's on the bolt. And I think the selvage edge can add a really interesting texture to so many different parts of your garment, depending on what the selvage edge on your fabric looks like. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And lastly, because the selvage edge is typically a tighter weave, it has a little bit more durability than the rest of the fabric, which um, I think can be key when you're adding it to certain seams on your garment. So I've actually used the selvage edge on a lot of my designs that I've put up in my made to measure clothing collection, such as uh, the shirt I have on right now is called the Wren shirt. And I use the selvage edge in the neckline of the collar to help it look like it has a little bit of a fray to it. But the really cool part about it is that it's not actually fraying. So it won't unravel over time and through the wash. It's actually super durable and tightly woven. So depending on what fabric you're using and what its selvage edge looks like, you can use it to get sort of a faux frayed edge that actually increases the strength of your seams. I've also done it on the center front button placket on a tank top before to get sort of a frayed, um, to get sort of a frayed look down the center front. This was using Osnaberg cotton. I've also used the selvage edge on my moonseed tank and shorts as well as the saltwater shirt and saltwater shorts. I often use that selvage edge as my ruffle piece. It helps so I don't have to actually hem that ruffle and it gives it a really cool texture. I've used it on my Atlas shirt, which has a center back seam line where I actually expose the selvage edge and it gives the shirt sort of a look like there's a spine running down the center. Before I jump in and show you how to actually incorporate the selvage edge into your designs and sew it up, uh, I just want to preface that all selvage edges are not created equal. I want to show you what some different selvage edges could look like. Um, you'll see that some just really would make the design uglier than cuter. Um, so here's, here's my quick review, my quick and dirty review of some different selvage edges that I had just in my fabric collection right here. All right, so starting with the linen that I actually use most often. This is a mid-weight linen that I get from fabricstore.com and it has a really beautiful weave to it. So this fabric has a selvage edge that I actually use quite frequently. You can see that it is a frayed selvage edge. And uh, one thing that I ha do have to deal with though is that on one side, it's just a nice continuous color from the fabric to the edge, but on the other edge, edge of the fabric, there is sort of a thread running through them that you may or may not want in your design. What I do is rip through two ends of that thread and actually pull that thread out as best I can. This is a super thick linen. It's probably the thickest I've ever bought and it's got a bound edge that really is super dense. And actually when I pre-wash this fabric, the dense edge doesn't shrink up as much as the fabric does. And so it ends up doing a little bit of a ruffle effect here, which I do think is sort of nice when I'm making 
actual ruffles for um, a sleeve or something like that. On the other end of the spectrum, I have a ultra lightweight linen gauze. And this has a really beautiful frayed edge that I think would work quite well in different designs. This is a selvage edge on a little bit heavier weight linen. Again, it's more tightly bound, no frayed edge. This is more of a lightweight linen that I got from Joann's and it does have the beautiful frayed edge. It has a lighter white thread running through it, but I really do like the look of the white thread. I'm not bothered by it, so I would use this in a design. Here's another linen fabric from Joann's that has a really bold edge on it. I would definitely use this in a design if I felt that it fit. Um, I actually have in the past, and I thought it looked really nice. One thing to take into account, though, is that with fabrics from big box retailers like Joann's, or Hobby Lobby, I have often seen that they change the look of the selvage edge over time. So if you were planning on remaking something multiple times and wanted the same selvage edge each time, don't necessarily count on it because sometimes they do change it up the way that it looks and change the color threads that are in it. But that can also be a really fun surprise for next time you go back to the store and see what they've got. I'm gonna show some non-linen fabrics that are still plant-based fiber. So we have right here, this is an Osnaberg cotton. It has a beautiful frayed edge. I would definitely use this in a design. This is a denim fabric that was gifted to me and it also has a frayed edge in combination with sort of a um, tightly woven bound edge. And I like the way this looks. I think it helps add texture and a little bit of rustic elements to the denim. Uh, so I would definitely in incorporate this into a one of my designs. Now there's definitely a couple fabrics like I mentioned that I would not use the bias edge for. So for example, this is a cotton fabric, I believe, that has a print on it. You can see an original screen print. So I would not use this type of selvage edge in one of my designs just because, I mean, it could be unique. <laughs> you could definitely give credit to uh, Rich Loom if you wanted to. Um, but uh, that's probably not one that I would use. Here's a linen, another linen that I would probably not use. So this one is a jacquard, jacquard linen fabric from Fabric Store. And while it is an absolutely beautiful and pretty expensive fabric, um, I would probably not use it for its selvage edge just because, again, it has this border right here. And uh, while it's not impossible to make that look cool, uh, I really like it when the pattern comes all the way to the edge. So I haven't used this one yet, but we'll see if maybe I come up with something in the future. All right, let me show you three ways to add the selvage edge to your next sewing project. The first technique that I'm going to show you is a peekaboo seam. I'm not actually sure that's the technical term, but I just decided that I like it. Um, but this is where the selvage edge is actually going to peek out of a seam line, like on a collar, a pocket, or on the cuffs of a shirt or pants. When you're cutting out your strip of selvage edge, you just want to cut it a little bit bigger than your seam allowance is going to be. So I'm doing a half inch seam allowance and I'm making sure to cut that selvage edge at a width a little bit larger than a half inch. All right, so we have our two collar stand pieces cut out and the total length of selvage edge that we're going to cut out should just be able to reach from one corner across the top and down to the other corner. Now with the right side of our collar stand facing up, we're going to pin with raw edges aligned our selvage strip to our collar. Normally when we want to connect a strip of fabric to a curved edge, we would cut it on the bias. But our selvage strip of course has to be on the straight grain. So as you're curving it around curved edges like on a collar stand, just be patient and work it a little bit with your fingers. It's okay. I think it still looks really great even if you end up with little creases or folds because it just adds that much more texture. You will want to pin this part very well to hold it in place. Then on our sewing machine we'll do a straight stitch with one quarter inch seam allowance. Now trim off any excess of that selvage strip. Now I'm gonna proceed with my usual technique of putting together a collar stand. So I'm gonna take the collar stand piece that has the selvage edge strip on it. I'm going to flip it over and I'm gonna turn up that bottom edge by one half inch. And press it really well with my iron. This will be the part that gets sewn up against your neckline. Now I'm going to take that same collar stand piece and 
With right sides facing, I'm gonna place it right on top of the other collar stand piece. I pin it really well all around the curved edges and the top edge. Now over on my sewing machine, I'm sewing at a half inch seam allowance up one curved edge across the top and down the other curved edge, leaving that whole long bottom edge unsewn to attach to the neckline. To reduce bulk, I'm coming in with my scissors and I'm trimming my seam allowance down to about one eighth to a quarter inch. Now I'm gonna flip the collar stand right side out and review our beautiful selvage edge. Oh yeah, very nice. All right, so now we want to use our iron to press that seam as flat as possible where the selvage edge is sort of peeking out. And when you flip this collar stand over, just remember to really press that back side edge too. Sometimes it tries to sort of fold up on me. So once we've got the whole thing really, really flat, we're just going to do a top stitch 1 8 inch from the edge of our seam line. Oh, and she's a beaut. Oh, look at that. Selvage. Oh, that's selvage. Looks really nice and soft. It adds so much texture. Looks like a frayed collar, but it's not actually fraying. It's actually adding a lot of durability to our collar stand. You could also do this technique with something like a patch pocket. Similar concept, you're going to attach with raw edges aligned, then with right sides facing, sandwich the selvage edge between the other pocket piece. And so all the way around with your regular seam allowance, something like one half inch, leaving an opening so that you can turn the pocket right sides out in a minute. Trim off the excess fabric or clip any corners if you need to. And as we turn it right side out, it is so satisfying to see that little roughly selvage edge peeking its way out through that seam. I use a pencil to turn everything and get pointy corners and iron really, really well. Once you've got it flat, you can add a top stitch to help that seam lay even flatter. Oh yeah, that one turned out real nice. This was that denim fabric I showed you earlier, and I think the selvage edge really helps it pop. For technique number two, I'm going to show you how to use the selvage edge as the center back or center front seam of a shirt. This technique can only be used on shirts where the center front or back is a straight line and on the straight grain. You'll just cut your bodice pattern piece right up against the selvage edge. If this shirt looks tiny, that's because it sure is. I didn't want to waste too much fabric here, so I did a tiny mini version of a shirt. To start, we'll put bodice right on top of bodice left with wrong sides facing. That's super important here. So wrong sides are facing each other and the selvage edge is nicely aligned. Now we're going to stitch with our normal seam allowance down that center back seam. We're gonna press this seam open with a hot iron. Now stitch 1 8 inch from that frayed selvage edge on both sides of your initial center seam. I really love the dramatic effect of how this sort of looks like a spine going down the center of the shirt. For technique number three, I'm going to show you how to use the selvage edge as an easy hemline that doesn't need any extra finishing. This technique will only work for hemlines that are straight lines and cut on the straight grain. I find this technique to be perfect for things like ruffles at the end of sleeves or shorts, things like that. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how to add a selvage edge as the ruffle on the end of a sleeve. So I've got my sleeve piece cut out and I have my selvage edge cut out. I like to do my ruffle pieces 1.5 times longer than the length of the bottom of the sleeve. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'll also be showing you how I attach ruffles. So I start with doing a basting stitch across the top of my selvage ruffle piece here. I backstitch 
at the beginning and I do not backstitch at the end. I leave about six inches of thread as a loose tail at the end. I'm stitching about one quarter inch from the edge and using a stitch length of four. Now a bonus tip is that when I'm making ruffles, I like to actually use my ironing board. If you have a soft ironing board, you can actually pin your fabric straight to the ironing board to keep it in place and create the most perfect ruffles. I have my ruffle piece right sides facing with the bottom of my sleeve piece with raw edges aligned. And after pinning both ends to the ironing board and adding a safety anchor pin off to the right, I'm going to pull my loose top thread until I've bunched up the fabric to the exact length of the bottom of my sleeve. Once I have it there, I actually use that third anchoring pin and I wrap my thread around it three or four times just to hold that thread tight and taut in place. And then I can push my ruffles out to the exact location that I want them all to be, come in with my hot iron and press them flat. I pull out my anchor and readjust my two edge pins and now I'm going to surge along that bottom line. Now that it's surged, I'm just going to press the seam allowance up towards the back of the sleeve and the ruffles down away from the sleeve. I'll take my seam ripper and take out any of my basting stitch that is visible. And then finally, I take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch 1 8 of an inch from my seam line. And that's it. An awesome way to perhaps add color or texture to the ruffle or the hemline of my garment. All of these, all of these little sample pieces look like I have a weird oddities obsession but uh look at that texture all right so what do you guys think are you gonna try out any of these techniques i really do think you'll find it to be a fun way to use up parts of your fabric that you weren't using before and add a little bit more texture if you're using a frayed selvage while still adding some extra durability. So I hope you'll try integrating these into some sewing patterns that you have planned for this year. And I think they'd be super fun to add in as special elements on my canary sewing pattern or my pocket sewing pattern using just the techniques that I showed right here. If you try any of these tricks out, please do let me know. And if you like this video, of course, give it a like. And please do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'm trying to post about once every week or two, and I have a really fun one planned for us next week. And of course, if you have any other cool ideas for how to use the selvage edge, please let us know in the comments below. All right, bye guys!